Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video we'll be discussing about make and see make. We'll see what is the difference between these two. So yeah, I think uh, this video is going to be especially helpful for people who are maybe starting off with uh, say coding and uh, let's say maybe they are starting off with C or C++ based uh, coding. So they will definitely come across make or see make. Uh, especially if they are kind of like coding in, let's say, Linux based environments for Make, especially. Yeah. We will just uh, see about these two in, in a bit more detail. Uh, so, to start off, let's maybe try to understand some scenario, and uh, based on that, we'll try to relate to the Make and see Make from a scenario. So, let's maybe consider there is, a, uh, there is an example of, say, you are trying to cook something. Let's say we want to make a uh, let's say pizza so so we are trying to cook a pizza and so if at all you want to cook a pizza then there are like some tools which are needed so maybe you need an oven uh, and maybe you need a, a pizza cutter you basically need a kitchen so yeah there are like a lot of tools that you need in order to cook your pizza and apart from that, you also need a recipe. So maybe uh, the steps of the recipe can be like, let's say you have to first start off with the dough and then start off kneading the dough. Then finally get the, let's say, the pizza base. And then maybe you want to cut your uh, vegetables. Or, and then maybe you can uh, get the toppings done uh, then maybe you can just bake it then finally cut it so yeah there are like a series of steps involved in making a pizza and also you need a set of tools also so this series of steps which go in an order this would be your recipe so this is the recipe to make the pizza and these are the tools which are there which are needed or which are uh, exposed to you so that you can actually make a pizza. Now, uh, if we were to actually have a chef, so let's say we have a chef. So this chef, he knows the entire recipe. So he knows the exact steps to follow in order to get the pizza done. He also knows how to use the tools and what tool has to be used in which step, he, he's aware of that. So the chef is aware of the recipe uh, so he knows each and every detail of the recipe. So he, he knows every step in detail. So now if we try to relate this example with make and see make. So let's say your chef can actually be considered as a build tool. Okay. So build tool is nothing but your make here. Now, uh, so make you have a so make kind of uses a recipe so here the recipe is your make file i'll just give the terms first then we will try to understand how make works and make file will have some instructions using which it will be able to actually get the pizza cooked so here your pizza would actually be your say your binary or your executable so I think with this analogy, we will try to understand how make works. So what make will do is, so make is just a build tool. So it is a tool, it's like an automated tool used for building your uh, projects. So it's basically, you'll have your source code. You give this source code, I th uh, you, you, you actually give the instructions in a file called a make file. You give the instructions on how to actually use the source code and how to actually get the binary uh, up. So that's what make tool is for. It's just a build tool, which kind of uses a file called make file in which there are instructions mentioned using which the make tool will be able to actually convert this source code into your executable, the binary. Uh, this may not exactly be binary. It can also be like uh, say libraries. Uh, it can be anything. It depends on uh, what you have mentioned in the make file. So the flow is like, you'll have your source files. Then you use these source files and then come up with a make file. 
So in the make file, you basically specify the instructions saying what all source files to use and then how to actually get the binary out. And then you send this make file to make, which is like an automated build system. It will read this make file, it will know what all source files to include, how to build the uh, binary and then it will just give you the output as your binary or your executor. So this is the usual flow how make actually works. So you have your source files written, you have your code written, let's say you have written your C, C++ code here and then uh, you write a make file. So in the make file it's just a set of instructions on how to build the binary. Then you give, you feed this make file to your make, which is like the tool. It will read this instructions in the make file and then finally come up with the binary. So this is like a flow in which uh, make kind of works. So you can relate make to the chef, the make file to the recipe, and your pizza to be the binary. So I think this is pretty much uh, it about make. And whatever tools you have, I think this would be your system tools. So maybe kitchen, maybe you can think of kitchen as your platform. It could be say Windows or it could be Linux. And then these are some tools which you will have in your system. So based on what all tools you have and what all instructions are mentioned in the make file, make will be able to actually convert your source files into the binary. So that's how the flow is uh, for make. Uh, I think with this analogy, it's easy to understand what make kind of is and how it kind of relates to this example. So now we'll try to maybe understand what CMake is with the same analogy. So I'll just maybe get rid of uh, these. Uh, okay, so now that we know what make is, so make is basically your chef, let's assume there is someone whom you just give an instruction in very basic uh, language. So let's say you just, so there is someone, let's say there is someone here and I will be able to give him an instruction saying, make me say a uh, cheese pizza. So you just give this basic instruction to this someone. So let's call this someone as a, maybe a master chef. So this person is aware of every recipe. So that's what this person is. So you just give an instruction saying, make me a cheese pizza. Now what this master chef will be able to do is, so he's, he's kind of like very busy, let's assume. And he won't be able to actually go and make this. But what he will be able to do is, he will be able to give you a recipe for whatever you have requested. So you wanted a cheese pizza this master chef will be able to actually give you the recipe for the cheese pizza. And this recipe will then be given to the chef, our chef, and uh, our chef will be able to read the recipe and he should be able to actually cook the pizza. So let's assume there is this kind of scenario as well. So chef will be able to actually read the recipe and get the pizza done. But let's say we actually have one more master chef whom giving an instruction is enough. You just give an instruction to master chef, he'll be able to give the recipe. So that's the flow. Now, if we take this as an example, so this master chef here is actually your scenic. And recipe is anyway your make file. And chef is nothing but make here. And again, your pizza is your executable. So this is how it is and what is this instruction? So this instruction is actually something called cmakelist.txt file. Okay. So yeah, if you just look at this example, you have a cmakelists.txt, which is just going to give like very basic instruction saying you want a cheese pizza. Uh, so you just give like a very high level instruction in this uh, file. So this is given to the master chef, which is our CMake. So CMake will be able to understand your high level instruction here mentioned in the CMake uh, lists.txt 
and with this as an input, CMake will be actually able to give the output as the recipe. So recipe is your make file. Now this make file will then be used by the chef or your make build tool and then he'll be able to actually come up with the binary, which is a pizza. So if you just take a look at this example, we can see that CMake is just going to give you the recipe. It won't be able to actually give you the binary directly. So the CMake's job is just to take the instructions, high level instructions mentioned here and then generate a recipe, which is your make file. So with this make file generated, you again have to give it to a build tool. This is like your actual build system. So build system here is your make. So make is your build system and CMake is, you can maybe consider this to be a, this is a build system generator. So this itself is not a build system. This is just going to help in building. It's just going to make the process of building easy. So that's pretty much it about uh, CMake and Make like in a very general sense and very basic sense. Okay, so talking about the difference between Make and CMake, uh, as we've seen, Make is the actual build tool. So this is the automated build tool, which will uh, help in generating your executable. Whereas CMake is just a build system generator. So CMake itself cannot build the executable, but it will help in actually, it will help in some inputs which can be given to make and then make will anyway build the tool. So this is just a build system generator, but this itself is not a build system or a build tool. Then we have uh, the input to a make, uh, to, to this make is actually a make file. So you have something called make file, which you give as an input to make and make will be able to give you the binary. Uh, the input to CMake, however, is something called a CMake lists.txt file. So this would be the input. Now, uh, make where exactly, what is the platform on which make runs? So primarily make is actually used in uh, Unix based or Linux uh, based systems. And make can also be used in Windows, but I think uh, you will have to use uh, probably MinGW uh, on Windows. But yeah, it's primarily used on Unix based systems. Whereas CMake is like cross platform. So it, it it doesn't matter which platform you are actually running the CMake command on, it will be able to give you the uh, make file. So the output of the make file is actually the actual binary or the executable, whereas the output from the CMake would be your make file, which indeed is an input to make. Okay, and finally, uh, if you want to make, if you want to make your binary, then you'll have to actually write all the steps manually in the make file. So that's the uh, necessity for make to work. And in CMake, however, you can just uh, manually write the high level steps in the CMake lists. This will indeed give you make file, which will have all the steps written. And then finally make and build your uh, executable. So yeah, that's the difference uh, between make and CMake. Yeah, thank you for watching.